This challenge had the highest number of judges to ever judge a dish on the show. There was a French celebrity chef, and then there was Chef Ramsay, of course. And who could forget Ramsay's 7.5 million followers? But this chef single-handedly swept away millions of votes with his fantastic presentation and delicious dish. And that's just one of the many best dishes on Hell's Kitchen. To start things off, we've got a contestant who was nominated three times for elimination, but still got to the finals. Mary Ponelt was the runner-up of the 11th season. Although she had a pretty mediocre start, with each passing day, she cemented her place as one of the best chefs to ever be featured on Hell's Kitchen. For someone who had previously worked as a butcher and a line cook in Massachusetts, Ponelt's growth on the show was exponential. Let's quickly fast forward to episode 17 when the remaining chefs received their black jackets. This is when Chef Ramsay introduced everyone to the pressure cooker challenge. Now, this challenge was going to be very difficult since almost none of the chefs had ever used a pressure cooker in their lives. I've never used a pressure cooker before. I've never even used a pressure cooker before. But there was one chef who was really excited. Ponelt revealed that she owned one back at home, which is why she was beaming with confidence. Once the challenge started, every chef seemed to be having an issue, except for Ponelt, of course, who had the clear advantage. During the cook time, Susan Heaton lifted the lid of her pressure cooker six times, John Scallion's lamb came out burnt, and Cindy Stanimirov felt her dish wasn't rested enough. While all the other chefs were worrying about their dish, Ponelt decided to add something more. She decided to make fresh pasta after realizing that she still had five minutes left for the challenge. By now, her dish looked very promising. For this episode, two special guest judges were invited, Nancy Silverton and Leslie Barger Sutter. Ponelt was the last person to present her dish, but before we get to that, let's take a look at the other dishes. Firstly, the judges picked Heaton's pork belly with fennel, leek slaw, and crispy skin. Her dish was criticized for having under-rendered fat, which was predictable. Sutter praised the flavored slaw, but felt that the dish was clunky, while Chef Ramsay thought that the pork was unevenly cooked. Later on, when it was Janelle Witt's turn, she presented goat ribs with crispy okra and mashed potatoes. Her dish was praised for being well-seasoned and having the right touch of flavors. Now, the only chef left was Ponelt. Hmm, would she be able to beat Witt's near-perfect score? With a bright smile on her face, Ponelt presented her beef Borganian with fresh pasta. With just one look, the judges felt that Ponelt made a brave and ambitious move by adding pasta to her dish. And finally, when they tasted it, this is how they reacted. Everything complements the chunks of the meat, chunks of the carrot, even the noodle. Yeah, I'm loving, I'm loving the meat. It's delicious. But the question is, what did the judges score her? Ponelt ended up getting five stars from all three judges, and she was ecstatic. I mean, she obviously had a clear advantage over the others, but even the flavoring and the way the meat was cooked matters as well. Going from a really unimpressive signature dish to reaching the finals, Ponelt's growth on the show was remarkable. It was actually in the 8th episode that Ponelt's hidden potential surfaced. During the family night dinner service, Ponelt was at the meat station. When the red team moved on to the entrees, she was feeling nervous about failing yet again. Ponelt had already been nominated more than once, so she had no room for mistakes. So, how exactly did she do? Well, simply put, she was incredible. Not only did she serve beautifully cooked Wellingtons, but she also communicated fantastically with her teammates. Good job, Mary! Mary's made a full, like, 180. Later, after the red team finished with their tickets, they were asked to assist the blue team, and Ponelt did great. In an interview, Ponelt shared how she dealt with the pressure of the competition. She said, It's challenging to do things within a set time limit and push my limits. My favorite part, as crazy as it sounds, has been Chef Ramsay and his personality. When he's yelling at you, he's just trying to push you to be better. I'm sure Ponelt put every bit of Chef Ramsay's criticism to good use. But this next contestant knew exactly how to plate, how to present, and above all, how to make delicious food. If there was anything lacking, it would have to be his manners. Next up, we've got Russell Cook, the runner-up of Season 8. Cook was undoubtedly a talented chef, but his attitude was a different story. In the 11th episode, Chef Ramsay introduced the Amuse Bush Challenge, where each contestant would be given 30 minutes to create five beautiful portions of Amuse Bush for the judges. This time around, there was a long list of judges. This included Ludo Lefebvre, Keen and Karen Hatfield, Suzanne Tracht, and Michael Simarusti. Impressing Michelin star chefs wasn't going to be an easy task, but each contestant was ready to give it their all. While Cook was the fifth person to get his dish judged, let's first take a look at how the others did. Gail Novonario was the first person to get her dish judged, and she presented a sesame spring roll with peanut sauce. Her dish was praised for its presentation, as well as for tasting delicious, and she scored an impressive 87 overall. 
Later on, when it was Sively's turn, she presented shrimp and grits. As usual, her dish was slammed for looking like a mess, and the taste was compared to something really revolting. That being body odor. I wonder how she felt after that comment, but she was definitely disappointed with a 67 score overall. And finally, it was Cook's turn. He presented Hamachi Crudo with apple celery broth, and this is what the judges thought about his presentation. I say bravo. It looks great. Thank you. It's very sexy. I love the little drops of oil and the little radishes. All very precise. It's, it's gorgeous. The dish was just as delicious as it looked, and it landed him with a perfect score of 100. The others didn't have a chance at winning since they either had poor presentation or lackluster flavors. As I said earlier, Cook was an incredible chef. I mean, hands down, probably one of the best. But his personality made it hard for all of us to respect him. Like, take this for instance, when the blue team lost the prom planning challenge in episode 5. During their punishment, Cook was extremely rude to the prom committee members. He went on to curse them and even snap at them just because they were giving him instructions. Don't talk about the kitchen because you guys don't know shit about the kitchen. How about you not give us attitude? Yeah. Are you kidding me? We're doing this for you. How about you back up a little bit? I'm not doing this for my 15 minutes of fame. I'm doing this for a f***ing career, so step off. Wait, watch your language. Watch my language? I'm a grown-ass man. Now, that's clearly not how a chef should behave. But Cook was obviously hot-headed. When he lost to Sively, rather than just take the defeat graciously, he blamed his brigade and threatened them. You never get a job in any city I work. I'm gonna definitely blackball you guys, because you guys me so royally too. What a sore loser! Who knows, maybe he could have won the title if he just treated his team better. But this next contestant was neck to neck with another competitor on his team. However, there was one particular dish that helped him rank at the top of the scoreboard. So much so that Chef Ramsay declared it to be the best dish he's ever tasted that entire year. Wow, that sounds like a clear winner, and that's exactly how it turned out. After two runner-ups back-to-back, it's high time that we talk about the winner of Season 20. Like every other contestant on this list, Trenton Garvey was one of the strongest chefs on Hell's Kitchen. Be it in his cooking, collaboration, or leadership, Garvey was spot on. In the 13th episode, the final five chefs who were given a black jacket were given 45 minutes to showcase their skills. The challenge was to present a piece of art on a plate, which is basically a dish that looks as good as it tastes. Steve Glenn went with a white fish that could easily pop on a plate, Garvey went with a glazed carrot puree on a sprite of pan-seared scallops, Megan Gill presented a citrus marinated duck, and Bryn Gibson dished out an exotic clementine with blood orange crystals. While each of these dishes looked ravishing, which one do you think tasted best? Well, this is exactly what Chef Ramsay did. He took a picture of each of the beautifully plated dishes and posted it to his 7.5 million followers at the time. Once the pictures went live, the followers voted on which dish looked best. Now, this is something that made the entire challenge even more challenging. And to further add to the pressure, Chef Ramsay invited the very charismatic French chef, Ludo Lefebvre, as the guest judge. When it was time for the presentation, Garvey was the fourth person to have his dish judged, but how did the others do? Gibson was the first person to present her pan-seared scallops on top of coconut sauce. Wow, just look at that. This dish looks so clean and colorful. It was also praised for the right amount of crunch from the cauliflower. But she made a really huge mistake. She chose the wrong plate for her dish. Yeah, I'd give it a five if you put it on a different plate. Because you got white on white, which is a no-no. Sorry, Bryn, but at this point in the competition, every small detail matters. And so she ended up with an eight overall, which is still pretty good. Next up, it was time for Glenn and his blood orange and fennel poach haddock glazed with vegetable puree. At first, Glenn received praise for making fish and nailing the berclin, but he lost most of his points for the puree, which was a tad bit too grainy. While Glenn walked away with a disappointing 6 overall, Wilhelm did slightly better with her brown sugar seared haddock and cauliflower puree. She was praised for using a colored palette and giving it a nice and pleasant taste. Overall, the only thing her dish lacked was more finishing, which is why she landed with 7 points. Now, that brings us to Garvey. He presented pan-seared scallops with glazed carrot puree, chai flour, as well as pomegranate and dill garnishing. And well, 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 I was at a loss for words with this dish. It looked absolutely stunning. This was some show-stopping material for sure. Everything looked perfect. But how exactly did it taste? Let's find out from Chef Lefebvre. Everything is well balanced. Wow. I would say it's a, almost a perfect dish. With a perfect 10 out of 10 score from Garvey, the pressure was on for Gil to present a dish of equal or better quality. So, would the pan-seared duck breast with sweet potato ginger puree help her match Garvey's score? I like when people show the, the skin like that. It's elegant. Cooked beautifully. Thank you, Chef. Uh, yeah. Really beautifully. Now, that's what you'd expect from a black jacket. 
And now that there was a tie, the only way to find out who did better was through Chef Ramsay's followers. Check out how things turned out. Goes to... Trenton. Thank you so much. Bravo. There was no doubt. I mean, clearly Garvey's dish was a winner. You didn't have to taste it to know it. And this wasn't even nearly the first time he impressed Chef Ramsay. Garvey was always praised for his cooking skill. Several viewers pointed out how he always outshone everyone in almost all the challenges. He made dishes that not only tasted good, but also looked beautiful. And this black jacket challenge wasn't the only time these brilliantly talented chefs displayed their skills. Back in the ninth episode, during the Spells Kitchen Challenge, Garvey and Gil represented the blue team against Antonia Ruiz. Together, they presented a pan-seared ribeye and pan-roasted mushrooms with pink peppercorn cream sauce. Later on, when Chef Ramsay had to deliver his final judgment, he said this. Honestly, two of the best ribeye dishes I've tasted this year. Wow, coming from Chef Ramsay, I hope both Garvey and Gil realize the amount of weight behind this comment. But Chef Ramsay kept driving the chefs to give it their best. No one's perfect in Chef Ramsay's book. And so, while he did praise Garvey for his work, during a one-on-one -on -one interview, he mentioned that he wanted to see more of Garvey's character in his dishes. But this next contestant was so good that he was allowed to keep his black jacket. And as a perk, Chef Ramsay even asked him to reach out to him. Which makes me wonder, Chef Ramsay doesn't ask every Tom, Dick, and Harry to contact him. So what did this young Californian do to sweep the famous chef off his feet? Cody Candelario was a contestant in the 19th season who ranked in 4th place. Candelario started off being a little cocky, but then he eventually evolved into an amazing chef. In the 8th episode, both the red and blue teams were introduced to the Craps Challenge. After the teams gambled their ingredients, they had 40 minutes to create their own dishes. The red team went up first, and Corey Sutton presented sticky rice with a red miso poached monkfish. Her dish was praised for being cooked well, and also for the idea of the miso soup. But she was criticized for failing to remove the veins. Next, when Jordan Savelle presented a monkfish and chips dish with miso rice tots, her dish was praised for the flair and for being an out-of-the-box idea. Right after this, Nikki Hanna presented miso and monkfish with a crispy rice cracker. Her dish was so good that she scored a perfect 5. However, Mary Lou Davis and her sesame crusted monkfish with crispy rice cakes was criticized for the dry rice, which led to her getting 3 points. And thanks to Lauren Lawless's undercooked mushrooms, the red team finished off with 19 points. So would the blue team be able to beat that score? Sadly, they were off to a poor start. Amber Lancaster's Zatar and Honey Spice Pork with the haricot vert and carrot salad had all the right colors, but she completely destroyed the pork. The pressure was building as Mark Quinonia stepped up to present his dish. But his honey glazed pork chop with salt was slammed for having raw pork. Then came Candelario's turn, and he presented his pork schnitzel with a herb salad, pickled haricot vert, and fried celery root. After two disappointing dishes that barely got them two points each, would Candelario's dish change the game? Chef Ramsay was so pleasantly surprised that he said this. That's cooked beautifully. Thanks, Chef. That is an easy five. Good job. Now that's some respite, but the blue team needed more. The pressure was now on Adam Pollack, who presented a five-spice pork chop with celery root puree. But guess what? Pollack's dish was so good that Chef Ramsay said it was absolutely extraordinary. The dish managed to hit the jackpot and landed a clean five points. But guess who else landed the jackpot? You! Since you made it this far into the video, be sure to drop a massive like down below and subscribe for more content like this. As long as you support us, we'll keep the videos coming. So click all of the necessary buttons to show us your love. It's completely free. With that out of the way, let's see how Declan Horgan, the last contestant left from the team, did. Horgan got a fantastic score for his honey mustard glazed pork chop. As expected, his dish was praised for having beautifully cooked pork and he scored a perfect 5. If I was in the place of Quinones or Lancaster right now, I would be hiding under my bed. I mean, they were the only ones who just got 2 points while the others got away with a perfect score. But hey, that's what the team challenges are all about. Thanks to the rest of the team, they at least managed to match the red team's score. With both teams tied at 19 points, Chef Ramsay chose Hannah and Candelario's dish to pick the winning dishes. So who do you think won? I mean, both of them did great, but there could only be one winner. And so, after giving it a lot of thought, Chef Ramsay came to a conclusion. This was his final judgment. Cody on the blue team. <laughs> Chef Ramsay said that it was very rare to get the right flavors in Candelario's dish, but he did it. And so, he absolutely deserved to win the challenge for his team that night. So, these were some of the best dishes to ever be prepared on Hell's Kitchen.
The comeback that we saw in the last entry with two contestants falling short and the other three springing right back up was simply amazing. But was Chef Ramsay aware that this round was going to be a tiebreaker? Why did he only choose Candelario's dish when the other two contestants also scored a perfect 5? It looks like I have a lot of thinking to do. Anyway, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.